What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking winter time bass fishing, winter time jig fishing, micro jigs, finesse football jigs, trailers, got some tips and some tricks for you. Let's go. All right, so winter time jig fishing. Jig fishing is really, there's not really a bad time to throw a jig. You know, a jig's one of those baits that you can throw year round. But for me, as we get into these winter months and everything kind of slows down at the lake, the water temps are dropping, the air temps are dropping, a jig is just one of my go-to baits. You know, as those winter storms kind of come in, you got kind of those really kind of cloudy, stormy days, those fish kind of suck to bottom, dragging a jig for me is one of those baits that just always seems to produce, but it always seems to produce bigger bites. You know, I can catch them on other finesse techniques, but it seems like some kind of jig gets bigger bites. You know, this time of the year, winter time fishing, you can get those truly giant fish to eat, right? You know, we've caught double digit bass in the winter time, at nighttime throwing jigs, daytime throwing jigs, when it's really, really cold, frigid outside. But something about those cold storms coming in and kind of pushing those fish down to bottom and just dragging a jig down there really produces those good bites. So gonna try and simplify it for you guys. Uh, really uh, kind of give you just a few key baits, some confidence baits of mine uh, that Matt and I have used through the years to catch a lot of fish, some good fish and really simplify it with colors, trailers, and all that good stuff. But a jig, like I said, it's one of those baits, 12 months out of the year, it should be tied on, or at least readily accessible. You know, a jig just always produces, uh, but especially winter time, it's one of my go-to uh, finesse techniques. Now, I gotta, gotta say something real quick. You know, I did a video a few weeks ago talking about finesse jigs. I talked about a 5 8 ounce jig or a or a 3 quarter ounce jig and some comments were like, oh, how is that finesse? When I'm talking about finesse jigs, I'm talking about light wire, light weed guard, light wire, so you can fish these things on 10, 12 pound test and not have any issues setting the hook. So yeah, you got a, you got a bigger football head on there, but it's still a finesse football. Lighter weed guard, lighter wire hook, and you're fishing it on lighter fishing line. So that's that's where that finesse comes in, but they're heavier heads. You know, even some of these micro jigs we're gonna talk about here shortly, you know, that's that little Kitek tungsten jig. That's a little half ounce head. When you pair that up with a little trailer, you got a really small package. You can fish it deep down on that rock transition, still have a lot of feel, but it's a really downsized package. So we're gonna cover all this, but I just wanna get that out of the way. When I'm talking about a finesse football, I might be talking about a heavy half ounce, five eighths ounce jig, or even a three quarter ounce jig, but we're still talking lighter wire and lighter fishing line. So for me, where are these fish? Now these fish, for the most part, they've pulled out of the backs of bays. You know, a lot of fisheries around the country that I've, I've experienced, has lower water levels in the winter time. You know, it's not really till we get those spring uh, storms or you have that snow melt where those, those rivers and creeks really fill up the uh, bodies of water. A lot of times you have uh, water levels that, are, that have dropped. So you have a lot less structure cover in the water and those fish are gonna pull out of those backwaters and come out where there's deep water access. So that is one of my key areas. If there is a, a, a channel swing or a break, maybe your your main body of water has a, a river that goes through it and you'll have a river edge, you know, they're gonna hang out on that break. Main lake points, main lake high spots, something out off the main lake point that separates maybe two river arms. Uh, you know, these fish are pulling out to have deep water access. The water temp doesn't, near, doesn't fluctuate nearly as much as that shallower water and they're looking for hard cover. They're looking for rock. So we've talked about it in videos in the past, but if you can find any sort of rock, I don't care if it's gravel or chunk rock or big boulders, if you can find that transition where you're coming off a main lake point or you find an off offshore high spot down in like 20 to 30 foot, 
and you, you're fishing in an area that has mud and then you find a little area, maybe the size of the deck of your boat uh, or, or a dinner table and it has chunk rock, you can feel it. As you're dragging that jig down, it's just nothing, nothing, mud, sand, whatever it may be, and then it's tuk tuk, and you feel that tick tick, get ready to hang on because that is where those fish are going to be. It's all about that rock. It's all about the crawdads. So look for rock. Another great area to check this time of the year is bluff walls. Bluff walls, again, deep water access. So sheer walls, I like to throw a jig up and I'll just kind of walk it, step it down the ledges, right? I'm free spooling, letting that thing drop, drag, drop. Bluff walls this time of the year hold a ton of fish as, as well. So find rock, find those main lake points, secondary points that have that hard cover on it and then bluff walls or deep water access really close by. That's where those fish are gonna move in and out or up and back, right, to feed. So when they're up there on that rock pile, they're looking to feed. As far as baits, again, I keep it really, really simple. For the most part, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm throwing some kind of football style jig football head it just comes through mud comes through chunk rock really really well you know we use arky style heads and different types of heads throughout the year different times of uh of the year but for me it's all about fishing deep it's all about dragging and for me having that wider football head football style head on there just gives me a lot better contact bottom feel and I don't get hung up nearly as often. All right, so we talked about where, right? We talked about water temps, anything below like 50, 55 degrees. You know, we're really starting to talk about that colder water. We're getting down, you know, I was out yesterday out in the low 40s. Water temps are dropping. These fish are, are congregating on that, that key main lake stuff and uh, they're looking for a good meal. And that's where that jig really comes into play. Having that skirt kind of pulsating, even though you're dragging it, you're fishing it slow, it just has more of a presence, more of a profile in the water than say like a, a little drop shot worm or a little Ned rig, something like that. Just having that full body presence in the water, having a little bit of movement with that skirt and stuff, I think that's really the key for getting those bigger bites. So baits. We talked about the football jig. Depending on the day, I could be throwing a, a half ounce or a five eighths ounce football jig, or I could be throwing a little quarter ounce or a little three eighths ounce micro jig. Typically, I start with the bigger jig. I take, this is a Dirty Jigs Finesse football jig, okay? Colors are super simple. I'm going with my browns and purples, my green pumpkins. I'm going really natural colors because a lot of times this time of the year, those fish have a ton of time to sit there and examine your bait, really figure out, and eh, do I want to eat that? Do I not want to eat that? And uh, natural for me is key. With that said, a lot of times this time of the year, we get those storms, right? And we get creeks blowing out. We get the, the lake blowing out. I'm looking for clean water all the way through winter, all the way through spring. I might fish like a transition, clear water next to that mud line, but I'm fishing the clear water. And that's when I'm going with those, those clear colors. So right there, dirty jigs, finesse football. Again, it's a heavy jig, but it's light wire, light weed guard. You can even go and, and trim the weed guard a little bit if you want, just to give yourself a little less weed guard let you uh, throw a lighter line and, and get good uh, hook penetration without having too much weed guard in the way or fish it as is totally up to you one thing i do do to my finesse jigs i will take a pair of scissors and i will take that jig you don't have to but i will take the front portion you see that front portion of that skirt and I will cut it that gives you that real thin skirt up front but has a little shorter 
um, skirt at the top and just gives a, a smaller profile around the head and some little secondary action. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, just a little tip for you guys. Take that, take that skirt, take that front half and trim it down. That'll give you a really good presentation. Okay, trailers, super simple as well. Uh, with those full size jigs, I'm going basically one style of trailer. It's gonna be a five inch Yamamoto twin tail grub. It's a really subtle action. Again, this time of the year, you don't want a ton of movement on your jig trailer. We're dragging. We're not stroking the jig. We're not hopping it like we would fishing a ledge in the summertime or in the fall. We're just dragging. We're feeling for that uh, for that transition. We're feeling for that rock, that hard bottom. And this right here, through all of the soft plastics that I've tried for trailers, you know, they all have different consistencies, right? Some's harder, some's a little bit softer. When you start getting into that colder water, uh, the action on those baits really slow down. So if you're throwing a, a harder or a more dense bait, that cold water just really, uh, really kills that action. This seems to be the perfect consistency. So it still has a little bit of movement on that drag, but it just doesn't look like I'm dragging a big heavy piece of plastic down there. So that, that twin tail grub, that five inch, is really key for the full size jig okay again green pumpkin or your cinnamon and brown just like every video i'll link everything down below in the video description but that right there brown and purple jig cinnamon trailer right there that has caught so many fish for me probably my number one jig combination right there in the winter time now let's give you some other options again we're keeping it simple but typically that's what i start out with i i start out with that full profile skirted jig okay the other alternative that i throw again it's another bait by yamamoto this is the five inch hula grub looks just like the twin tail except it has the hula top right so you can actually take your favorite football jig head skirtless and fish this. This is a this is a an inexpensive way to fish that jig. You know, a lot of times when we're fishing this time of the year, we are fishing around that rock, and uh, it happens to all of us. We get hung up. We have to break off. So just throwing that skirted football uh, or the skirtless football head with that hula grub on there or spider jig, some people call it. That is a really cool bait. And what's nice about this, again, we're just dragging right. A lot of times this time of the year, you don't feel that traditional just thump of that jig bite. It just feels mushy. It just feels a little different than what you've been feeling as you're dragging through that rock. And that fish has come in and just sucked it up and turns its head as, that, as it starts to swim away. That rod, that rod tip starts loading. You see that deflection. Not having that weed guard and having that light wire hook allows that fish to almost hook itself. All you have to do is really load into that fish, load that rod and that hook penetrates the skin of that mouth and uh, you get real good hook penetration without really having to really set the hook. So that is another great alternative. So we got the skirted football jig, the dirty jig skirted, and then we have the straight skirtless head, just a, a football jig head with the hula grub on there. Again, green pumpkins, uh, your browns, your cinnamons, purples, that sort of stuff. Again, I'll link that stuff down below, but that's my one and two punch right there. On the flip side, when it starts getting ultra tough, that's when I start downsizing. So same thought process, right? Same deal, just downsizing a little bit. Micro jigs. You guys that like to throw spinning rods or BFS setups or lighter bait casters, throwing a little micro jig, same deal. It's just downsizing the presentation. And we've all seen that trend in bass fishing, right? We've, we all hear guys talk about it. We've seen it. I've seen it on the water. You have to downsize, throw in smaller drop shot baits, smaller swim baits. It's, it's extreme, right? You're either going ultra big or, or downsizing. It seems like those baits, the, the normal baits in the middle, the fish have seen a lot, right? So we're downsizing. We're changing that profile up 
and uh, producing more bites with those those smaller jigs. So the little micro jig, that's a little missile baits football jig. And that guy right there is paired up with a little net bait paca. Little paca chunk, you see that? Tiny paca chunk. That is a really cool, finesse presentation. So it helps me get bites when I can't get bites on the full size jig. Again, your browns and purples, your green pumpkins. One other thing for you guys, if you guys like throwing tungsten, a little Kitek, that's a tungsten football head. That's a half ounce. Look how, look at the size profile. Look at the difference in that jig. They eat this thing when they won't eat this. Granted, you're gonna get bigger bites on this, but you're gonna catch more fish when it's really, really tough. When those storms roll in and those fish just shut down, they pull the bottom, throwing a little finesse micro jig is key for me. So this little guy right here, another little tip for you. Let me pull this, this uh, trailer off. This is actually, again, trying to keep it super simple for you guys. So there's that little jig. This is actually a four inch Yamamoto twin tail grub. So you guys saw the five inch. The four inch is a lot thinner profile. And what I do, I take and I cut down so there's only about an inch of the body left. And then that is what I thread onto that little jig. And again, you get that same subtle, just little flapping of those little appendages. And that just seems to be enough, especially in the winter time, to get those fish just to suck that bait up and, uh, and eat when they won't eat a lot of other things. So there it is, guys. Look at look how pretty that little, little bite-sized jig is, okay? So the Missile Jigs, the Kitek, Nishini makes a, a really cool little finesse jig, a little micro jig. So those are my three micro jigs. And then that finesse football, that, that, that football head, and uh, that really is my lineup this time of the year. Again, you don't want to go with trailers that have a ton of action. So I'm throwing the five inch twin tail grub, the four inch if I'm going downsize to those micro jigs, little tiny pocket chunk. Another little great one, if you guys are into that Z-Man, Elaztec stuff, and you guys like throwing the little micro jigs, those little Kitek or the little, little micro jigs we talked about, the TRD Bugs or the TRD Craws are two great downsize profile wintertime jig trailers. Again, not a ton of action. They sit up, it's got that Elaztec, so they kind of sit up in the water, got a real subtle movement, and that is key this time of the year. What else? Did I really simplify it down to like three or four baits? Colors we talked about, go natural. You know, it's just, for me, I've tried like the, the dark contrasty blacks and blues, the purples, but for me, again, those molten craw colors or those green pumpkins or the uh, cinnamon, you know, the brown purple, those really seem to produce more bites for me uh, this time of the year. Again, we're dragging. That next tip, drag, don't hop, okay? Just drag that bait. You want that thing down there, just bumping that rock. You wanna be in, in key, in tune with that bait feeling that transition, you're coming down that rock and then all of a sudden it stops and it's like sand or mud. Throw back up there, get back in that rock. You wanna fish that transition. That transition of rock where it breaks off to deep water, those fish are gonna hold right on that ledge. So a lot of times you'll be dragging and you'll kind of lose your bait because it's falling off the edge. Free spool, let it fall. Hopefully you're still in rock. If you're not, get back up there on that edge. Again, channel swings, bluff walls, I've caught so many fish this time of the year, basically on sheer walls. You know, I throw that little jig up there and I just drag. And as it's coming down and I, I lose the bait, it drops, I free spool it, it hits. I drag, free spool it, comes down, it hits. Mushy, a lot of times they'll catch it on that fall, uh, but it just feels mushy, reel down. And now you're fighting them in open water. You don't really need real stout heavy line so again that 10 12 4 carbon for me is key you can throw braid to liter 30 40 pound braid to liter but again downsizing the jig if you have to 
doing those little tips, taking that head, cutting that front half off, giving yourself that real profile, that slimmer profile for that jig is key for me. And then again, having the right action, the right bait consistency, that plastic consistency in that cold water is key to get that real subtle mo movement. So I will link the baits down below in the video description, but wintertime jig fishing, it's one of my favorite things to do. Again, when you when you load up on that fish, your heart gets pumping because I've had so many big fish, you don't even think they're that big, right? You load up on them, they don't have a ton of like, they're not doing the whole free wheelie thing and jumping and cartwheels and doing all that stuff. They're pretty lethargic. They don't fight that hard. Um, you don't realize how big they are until they get close to the boat and you see that fish open its mouth and come up and head shake. You're like, oh shoot, that fish just went from a pound and a half or to a 10 pounder. You don't realize how big they are until they get coming to the boat. But uh, with that said, Catching fish deep, guys, make sure you take your time as you fight these fish. You know, don't, don't set the hook and just grind them to the boat, especially if you're catching them out of 20 foot or deeper water. You want to take your time, fight those fish. They're not going to really play. They're not going to fight that hard. They're not going to play that long, but take your time so you don't kill those fish. Bringing those fish up from deep water really fast can really mess them up. And you want to make sure that you uh, protect the resource and it's there for years to come. So make sure you take your time and, uh, and, gently slowly bring those fish up from the deeper water but guys wintertime jig fishing when those storms come in it gets nasty you're not catching them on the crank or the a rig or swim bait and you have to slow down and you're just dragging definitely check out the jig if you guys haven't already the the big finesse football jigs down to the micro jigs will produce fish this time of the year when everything else in your boat won't Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get those as soon as possible. Uh, I will link all of these products that I talked about, my favorite trailers, combinations, colors, all that good stuff down below in the video description. As always, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video or learned something from it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.